I was gonna pull the trigger that I was like, just waiting to go like that. <laughs> but I know I should. But I know I should. Today's Wednesday, but more importantly than it being Wednesday, this is just a reminder to myself it's actually garbage day, which I've neglected some of my home responsibilities because of Sandbox Studio, and I really need to get back on taking the garbage out so I can uh, see my family again. Right? Hmm. <laughs> this stone is actually right at water level. If I sealed this up too much, water would actually pool up and come over into here. But aesthetically, this is gonna look really cool if I can get some water in this area. Okay. Allow a little bit of water okay. to infiltrate kind of through this area, yep. seal this whole area, but then leave a weep hole way over there. Okay. The water will pull up a little bit lower than this stone and then disappear behind some rocks over in that area. And this is where it's so important to understand after doing this for years, here's where water wants to go, right? So yeah, I didn't know this happened like the first year I started working it out. <laughs> Whoa. I oh, know, it's way off this summer morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely, it got dusty in here, and like, so you could yeah. hear it in our voice, but yeah. I think we're all ready to get after it. It is hump day That's here right. at Aqualand, and we have an enormous amount of work ahead of us today. So, Weston, walk our viewers through what your game plan is and how we're gonna accomplish that. Day one was a lot of messing around, kind of kicking off the different corners of the project. Day two, we spent a lot of time on the finicky little things, like getting these bowls in place, and getting all the plumbing in place for this whole fountain scheme. Like underneath it, got some glass in, and we kind of finished up this basin area over here. Reynolds got some bowls put in over there. Today, what our goal is, being we got all that little stuff that's so time consuming done, the goal is like just sling them and bring them, get rocks in here and build out this section of the pond, knock that out, get stepping stones put in up there, which may take a little more time. Yep. And then we're gonna be seaming a liner right up there in the back and wiggling a stream all the way back, basically starting that waterfall about where the blade of that excavator is. Yep, in the back just on the back side of the fountain. Yep. Yep. Over so there, we'll so kicking off back there, and then we're talking about doing some kind of like little seating area, like with some stumps around a fire or something. Cool, in that back corner. cool, which nobody's done yet. It's back on that back corner, but it'll be important for us when we're finishing up that fountainscape to put some appropriate sized boulders inside the liner yeah. on the fountainscape right. side in order to establish grade and be able to hold back the dirt for the burn for that waterfall. Yeah. So, kind of like make that fountainscape look like it's sunken down in, which yep. we don't want it looking like it's perched on top, correct? Which we can definitely do. So, I love your sling them and bring them. I think one thing that's going to give us a couple challenges is going to be this overlap, finishing up this waterfalls over here. So you go ahead and finish this. Yeah. You got this, buddy. I'll take that. <laughs> All right, so day three, these guys are chomping at the bit to get rolling, so we'll get a put a rest of the yap in, and we're gonna start, like Weston said, sling them and bring them. All right, let's go. But I know I should. We've got the waterfall coming in through here, obviously. This dictates what the water level behind us is gonna do, yeah. which is actually set too low. We okay. actually need to come in here and get it. What do we say? About like six inches? Well. We want the water level to be like here on these rocks. Okay. And you can see how There's much lower. Water. So we need to get a rock. We don't want it coming right to here, right? Because the water's gonna back up, you know, with a five to nine and, a, and another pump. And on there. To, to, to compensate for the thickness yeah, of the water, right? So we're gonna set this stone probably about an inch and a half lower than what suggested water level is on here. We can always pump later, and if we need to back it up a little bit more, add a piece of slate. But what you can't do is if you set the stone too high, you come in here and sh shave the rock down. Yeah. Because you could, but that was, so we'll set it a little bit lower. Kind of a tricky situation because the more narrow it is, the thicker the water is gonna get, meaning the water is gonna back up more. The wider it is, the thinner the water is gonna get. So there's really kind of just an educated guess. 
yeah. it's based off of experience. And you don't always get it right the first time, it's about as good as still come back to me. So if we set it an inch and a half lower based off of the two pumps that we have coming up in here, I think we'll be all right. And then we can always get it a little higher. If the other thing is we can make this actually what in the weir for what actually is foamed in here wider than that. That can just get choked down now or once it's already crusted that rear instead. So that's what's going on here. Obviously, I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's a giant cavity right here. Yep. So what I'm working on now is like kind of sealing all this stuff. Yep. If we were to turn this on, no matter what we did with this stone, nothing would come over the top of this. So we're going to come in here, fill this in, foam it, seal it, which will ensure 99% of the water goes where we want it to. Yep. The other place we're foaming is this stepping stone right here. Yeah. Because this was set a little later, we've got a big gap underneath this. Careful. And all that water is going to want to go underneath it. So we actually came, folded this liner back and up and over, shoved soil in there, minimizing how much foam I'm going to have to use. But the soil alone isn't enough to actually seal it. So I come back in with the Aquascape waterfall foam. <laughs> and seal back up into yep. this area. Being this now, a sandbox studio, I like to use at least four boxes. Yeah, we look. Good thing we're attached to the warehouse and that could probably happen. <laughs> well, we were aesthetically looking at this area here. Yep. So now this stone is actually right at water level. If I sealed this up too much, water would actually pool up and come over into here. But aesthetically, this is gonna look really cool if I can get some water in this area. So yeah, I think this will just be a fun area to experiment with. In my mind, I think I can seal that and get a bit liner down and then make a big uh, a weep gravel hole. weep hole yep. over in that area by our plumbing. We've got a tree skin that happens in there and this will look, this will just be a really cool little area. And I did defy lot, right? Like yeah. water level's higher here, it's gonna be lower there. It's just gonna be a little weird looking, but kind of cool. Maybe even allow us the opportunity, we got one more fogger. It'd be kind of cool to let that just be like kind of this like rolling like fog over in this space. This mystical walkway going on here. Weston and I are working on is like probably one of my favorite parts of um, any water feature. Yep. The bridge, the stepping stones, the interaction area that you come with the pond. And so Weston has a really cool design here with these stepping stones leading you out over to there. Originally we talked about it just being one big massive bridge. Right. And I think stepping stones are a whole lot more fun. Yeah. It's considerably right. more challenging. You gotta get these things level. So Weston and I can sit here with the machine operator, bend back there, making sure that this is level with this, right? So there's not a tripping hazard. If this was sitting two inches higher, everybody that stepped under this would probably get hung up mm -hmm. right here, trip and probably plus, fall into the pond. Plus the fact that there's water level here to be really obvious if we don't get it just right. Yeah. You know, because water is level and it'll tell you exactly if you mess it up. So water's gonna be moving through the joints of all of this. We got this stone, Weston's got another stone, all strapped up, ready to go over here. And one of my favorite things tonight, if you guys check out Weston's page, Tussie Landscaping, yep. you can see more and more of their work but one of their distinct styles is large boulders just here and there. So we got this massive boulder right here that Weston really, really wanted. <laughs> and because we're just great hosts, we say whatever you want and, and we'll do it. But this big boulder actually really helps with the progression of the path and the natural um, funneling of traffic and, and the way you're setting the, the stepping stones. So this kind of pushes you then around this area. We're gonna get another big one over there. So you kind of walk in between some of these big ones. Obviously not quite as tall, but then this one really accentuates like that big one over there. Another big one that I think we're going to set over in there. Kind of what I wanted to do with this boulder was like we are so right here we're right on water's edge, and I want to do it again here, but I, I didn't really want to make 15 feet of the same thing. So this breaks it up, gives you like the direction to come over here, and once we get past this boulder here, it gives us the opportunity to repeat this same vertical edge with water right off the edge of the stone without it looking like you did 15 feet of the same thing. It gets broken up, kind of guides you through these different. I kind of have this canyon feel as you walk in between the tree and that yep. boulder. This right. is going to be an exciting area. Like I'm looking forward to seeing yeah. how this all comes up. We'll get some little lights in there.
in here, yep. or maybe something big. You can probably get some nice lights from back here, hitting this rock. Yeah. And get them underneath. I like when you don't see the yeah. light itself. I just want to see the pinprick yeah. of light. I want to see the light. It's the casting. Flooding. Yep. Yeah. I don't like when people just like throw lights into the water feature with no regard for like like the pinprick of light blinding you. I like when the lights are pointed down, they're tucked way back in and recessed, and mm -hmm. you're not seeing that actual fixture. It well, looked. I think lunch is almost here. Yeah, I think so. I mean, and this was. Yeah, so I'm hungry. I get that. Like, my biological clock is saying it's almost lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs>